Okay, on this uh, edition of the laboratory here, we have a Mr. Christmas peppermint teacup. Uh, says sold exclusively at Sears. Oh, the light glare is annoying. Uh, holiday tea time. Uh, this was brought by a guy known as Christmas Lee here in Arizona. It has a um, Christmas display in Phoenix. He does every year. And he said this one is rotating, but when you put the two bears on it, it has a problem doing its thing. So, those two. And it starts making like a clacking sound. Uh, just like one of the other ones, there's the green and white paper. And this one runs on batteries. Uh, a lot of Mr. Christmas is AC. This is a DC battery one, and you can sit right there. Two AA batteries. So, put that back in the box. There's the two bears. Which I'm probably just gonna have to cut the tape and then just retape it. out and of course so we don't lose any parts or pieces we'll put the box back together set it aside uh, this piece let's see is dated 1998 so it's an oldie all right box is out You can hear it, it is porcelain. It actually feels like a real teacup on a plate. And we got new batteries in it. Hopefully they're still good. But we will check. It's rather loud. getting stuck. There we go. A little bit quieter. Alright. So I'm thinking it's either got a slipping belt or a slipping pulley or possibly a broken gear. figure out the disassembly process. First, we're going to take off the pieces that we know come off. We don't feel anything hidden under the sticker. Hopefully there's stuff underneath the, the pads. And there is. So, on this one, I'm going to take off the little uh, foam rubber feet, and there's some Phillips screws down there. I'm going to set these over with the bears and stuff so they don't get lost. Phillips. There's 
one screw. Two screws. And three screws. Now I'm holding on to the cup because I don't know how this one specifically comes apart. And I don't want the cup to fall out. You do see there's some glue residue right here yellow glue. So I'm wondering if it's also glued to the... Yeah, it is. It's glued as well as screwed, which makes sense. It helps with uh, ensuring that your fit's good, and if you lose a screw, you don't drop it. You don't have it fall apart. See the motor? It looks like it's just the glue holding it. Again, trying not to break it since it is a porcelain piece that's uh, 23 years old. There we go. There's the mechanisms. There's the drive gears. Quick inspection. I'm going to assume it's the 10 tooth, the most common gear to break on most any animated piece. The 10 tooth is actually on this center axle below this larger gear. The 10 tooth seems to be the most common failure. It doesn't look bad, but it's also covered in a lot of gunk. Standard with any. Let's check all the gears, check the teeth, check for cracks. There might be a crack in the worm here. Yeah, there is a small crack at the base of the worm gear. Does not appear to go all the way. It stops just past the first thread. That could be enough to break the friction tension on the shaft. Alrighty. Uh, the little electrical circuit board. I'll get a little closer so you can see what's inside. That's the worm gear I'm talking about. Uh, the electrical components over here, the resistors and the capacitor look good. They're not discolored or bulged. I'm assuming on the back side of this circuit board there is a blob chip. And the reason I say that is it says the letters are right there that say IC. For integrated circuit. So I'm assuming it's going to be on the back side since the yellow, red, and black wires actually are fed through the board to the bottom side. So the little chip that plays the music is attached here, which then sends it over to your speaker, which is right there. Uh, I'm going to test the motor by putting the batteries back in so it's going to be even louder since, of course, there's nothing to absorb the sound. Now I'm going to put my finger on the gear to see if it slips on the armature of the motor. So, be warned, it's going to get loud for a second. No, the gear is not slipping. It is actually stopping the entire armature. So, let's go back to this and do a little bit closer inspection on these gears. 
I'm going to have to wipe them off. So, add some paper towel. It's generally the most common gear to break are these little tentus. And I think this one might be broke. It is broke. Yeah, once I got the gunk out. Which the gunk is grease and then dust and stuff like that that builds up inside. really hard to see but we're going to check the other gears again the reason I know it's that also the 10 tooth is if I spin the armature these gears are pressed on so I can hold the armature and then turn this gear but if I can hold the armature and I can turn this gear separate you see the big gear is not turning it's because this gear is no longer attached due to the fact it's cracked so but I don't want to you know, jump ahead and say that's the only issue. I want to make sure that these gears are intact. This gear is a free-floating gear. It's not pressed on the armature. The armature does not have a knurled section for the press like this one does. And this one, of course, is pressed on because if it wasn't, it'd be slipping as it tries to turn the cup. I can't turn the gear whatsoever. Uh, barely. I gotta turn a little bit. But I don't want to damage the knurled section. I am gonna clean off a little bit of this grease so I can get a better look at the teeth and make sure we don't have any chips, cracks, or fractures. seated down pretty good. So I'm going to assume the biggest part is this broken 10 tooth. Well, I have some 10 teeth gear here. Make sure it's the right size, the right armature uh, hole. is not. It is actually too big. And I'm sorry, this is not a 10 tooth. This is an 8 tooth. So it's not the standard gear. My mistake. check my gears. See if I have an 8 tooth. I just assumed. Only for the fact that it's a, it's a standard hobby gear is the 10 tooth. They're basically using it to extend the nose of the gear. They didn't use a long gear, they used the standard gear and then added another piece to the end. Um, bear with me for a second. I have a box of hobby gears I just received and I gotta grab them. them at the other end of the room. So these gears are from Aokugi. I can't pronounce it. I ordered two sets of gears. I ordered some more 10 tooth gears just because they're the most common failure. Then I ordered a box of hobby gears. Let's see if there's any 8 tooth gears in here. 
I was going to do a search on Amazon and look for hobby gears. Uh, if you're looking specifically for the 10 tooth gears, you can just search for 10 tooth. Here we go. How many teeth does this guy have? One, two. This one's an eight tooth. Look at that. This, this little kid actually comes with an eight tooth. And it comes with eight tooth in different armature sizes. Um, it's going to be really hard for me to show on camera, but I will do my best to show you. Got a couple of worm gears, some spacers, all sorts of spacers. There's another eight tooth there. There's actually two more eight teeth there. Um, got some pulleys. Got belts or bands. I just figured I'd buy it just to see what it had, to see if I can repair any of these pieces, such as the Inesco, since Inesco was used uh, at the time, standard hobby gears, but they don't really have a standard hobby gear anymore. Oops, I just swept up my, uh, my eight tooth gears. So, if you go on Amazon and you want a 10 tooth, order it. Just do a search in their search section for 10 tooth. If you want an 8 tooth or a pack, I'll show it one more time. Hey, right there. And there's the skew. So it's A U K U Y E E. And then the part number on the uh, UPC. Is or the SKU is X zero zero two PCF zero X nine, and the title says Akui Plastic Gear Set for DIY Car Robot Quantity Twelve New Made in China. So I'll help you out in trying to find some of the small parts if you want to try and fix your own at home, um, or you can tear apart old electronics and get the gears and parts out of there, which I do quite often. Uh, so I'm going to try and show, I'll use the battery door as a contrast. You notice the one on the left, focus, is a bigger hole. The one on the right has a really small hole. That's the size of that armature, the small, well that gear is gone. The small hole is going to be too small. Oh yeah, it's a nice tight fit due to the fact it's not broke. using the screwdriver and to force the armature through. I need to set it on top of something to push it all the way up. See if I can use the other gear to help push it through. I did. It worked. That gear is now gone. Seated.
Now comes the fun part. I was trying to line up the three arm, uh, axle shafts or gear shafts into the three holes that are in this base. I'm doing is right where the battery door is, where these little tabs are. I can see with the light, I can see one of the armatures. I can see that one. Uh, the, uh, sorry, axle, pins, whatever you want to call them. Um, I can almost see the second one, which is this one. I can't see this one at all because of where it's located. And I figure if I can get two of them lined up, or it might just fall right in the place. Hope so. We're going to find out. So I need to screw the base on so I can put the batteries in and flip it over and see if it works. At least I got the base holes lined up since they're screwing in. She's not rotating. So I probably got one of the shafts in alignment and the other ones are out, or one of them's out. I'm not a big fan of when they're blind. It makes it really difficult to line them up. screws. So the majority of this video might just be trying to put this piece back on. Mm 
Alright, well I got the one again. I don't think it's engaged. And I can spin it too easy. It should have resistance because the worm gear cannot really be driven from the larger gear next to it. So that motor would try and bind it up and make this really hard to rotate. It rotates really easy as you can tell. So I think one of the shafts is out of alignment. try and turn this big gear you can see there's no movement here that's what I'm talking about there's no tension on this so I'm wondering if I can put these here and if they'll stay or I can drop it in I do it carefully maybe Right now, I wish those X-ray vision glasses they used to sell in comic books were real. I'll tell you that. There is no seeing what's going on inside here. No, it was close. One dropped out and landed right in the hole. So, let's try it one more time. See if I can get the all three in. Two more times. Uh, let's reduce the gravity by tipping it on its side. stiffer. It doesn't rotate. We might have done it. piece is pretty cool. I'll tell you one thing I don't like about it is you have to hold all that rotating mass in your hand to turn on and off the switch, which means by turning it, you're changing the pressure to tip it to its side to turn off and on. You're changing the inertial force of the mass that's spinning, and it puts extra pressure on those gears. So if it's a plate like this, Perfect balance, center of mass, you're good. As soon as you do this, the reach underneath or tip it and do one of these, you've shifted the weight and make it off balance, which I'm sure the bears do the same thing. But that lateral force on those plastic gears, yeah, that's not good. Now the, they might be using these to help counterbalance those, the, the handle, but I don't think the handle weighs as much as those do, because those are actually pretty stout. They feel like cast resin, and cast resin can be a lot heavier than ceramic or porcelain, especially because of its density due to its thickness. But this one has a bad gear, as you saw. 
it's a loud piece. I don't know if it's supposed to be that loud on the gears or if it's supposed to be that loud in general. But I'm going to let it run for a minute or two, see what happens. I might have to open it back up and get some more grease. I wiped off a decent amount, but not enough that it should affect it. So, if you have this piece, the peppermint teacup, from the uh, late 90s and it stops spinning especially when you add inertial weight there's a good chance that you lost your eight tooth gear and that if you buy the kit from them you'll have a gear inside you'll actually have two there's two of the large armature ones uh, to fix it of course one of my small ones that I had on the battery door it bounced and it's in the abyss, so I lost the gear, but that's okay. Where is the power switch? So. Yeah, these are these are pretty stout. I don't know exactly what they weigh, but they got a lot of gravity in them, I'll tell you that. And this teddy bear, he has uh, some indentations in his hand that fit through what would be the candy cane. So, as much as I hate to do it, I'm probably going to take the bottom off one more time and lubricate it. Uh, put some grease on there. I also want to check the gear. The, see if the teeth have a funny wear pattern. Like maybe the teeth are flexing, stretching, bending due to the fact that it's a cheaper quality plastic or nylon. And I know that if I tip the thing sideways, I might be able to get the base on easier with less finagling. So, there's the three screws. Bring this over. Off the first gear. That's still lubricated and I don't see anything funny. Let's pull out the second gear with the new gear teeth and check the teeth. You can definitely yeah, you can definitely see the torsion on this gear. Wow. So your teeth are in a straight line. I have one tooth, uh, one, two teeth that have a little bit of a wave in them right in the center where it meets up with this gear. That's what I'm talking about, the way they design it with the amount of mass that's rotating in such a small set of gears. It's just a lot of torque on the outside edge on these itty bitty gears in here. And I'm sure it worked perfectly when it was brand new, but um, things wear down. Now, these are new gears. Like I said, I just got them in. So it's either a subpar grade of plastic compared or it's, that's the only thing I can think of. Or it's just the pure torque of this teacup is just exceedingly strong. I'd rather use a big gear in here to a drive gear because it would distribute the torque of this moving mass. It's the same as a car tire. You're driving down the street and you got the outer edge of the tire has a huge amount of inertial force. That's why when they fall off of a vehicle, lug nuts or something breaks, the tire just keeps going. It generally passes the car. So this has got a lot of inertial force and it's got this itty bitty gear driving it. It's not even a 10 tooth. Which is slightly larger and a little bit stronger. But anyway, that's just my two cents and... Again, they don't make this piece anymore, so um, I am going to find some lithium grease. I'm sure that's what this is. Yeah, that's what it feels like. And I'm going to get some, put it in here, and then reassemble it and see if it's any quieter. Interesting. 
just a slot in the plastic with a piece of cellophane. And then fire it up again if it works and it's quieter then we know it's just lubrication is the big issue after replacing the eight tooth and go from there put it back together I put a dab of hot glue on the three feet once it's screwed back in and then package this one back up and get it back to its owner and move on to the next one if the grease doesn't work then i'm gonna have to see if i can find a heavier duty eight tooth uh, gear. So. so off to the uh, grease mine to find a thing of grease. Just set that there for now until I can find something to put on it to give it some lubrication. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm sure I'll be adding an addendum to this here in a moment with the end result once I lubricate these gears and hopefully quiet them down. Uh, oh, shall return? All right. I adjusted the spacing on the gears because that's just how high up the shaft or the gear is on the armature. Um, so this is the original broken one. I added some lubrication. It's a hair quieter, but it's still loud. But then again, I've never seen this piece, so I don't know if it was loud originally. Um, I'll have to talk to the owner of the piece and ask him if it was loud prior to it quit working all in general. But um, when I pressed the gear on, I figured it might have pushed the other gear too close or too up, high up on the shaft, which means it rubs the other gear. So I adjusted it and kept playing with it till there was a about the thickness of this piece of metal, which is maybe a construction paper thickness uh, gap, which also changes where the other teeth do this gear to a different position. So instead of it being just off the of center, it's now closer to center. This gear was just off the of center, but as you see, it is finally working. It's not sitting there jerking or spinning. So. Uh, for now, it's done. I'm going to message the owner and ask him how loud it was. Because I can't think of any other way to make it quieter. Lubrication is about the only thing you can do. So, But you can hear the music over the noise. So, it's always a plus. So, if you have this piece and it quits spinning, again, most likely a broken 8 tooth. Then if you buy the kit from them again, you got your A2. No, it's redundant. I've said it three or four times now. It's just so if you forgot, you wanted to rewind the video and write it down, you could pause it at the end of the video too and still see it. So, so this was the Mr. Christmas Peppermint Tea Cup uh, repair and how to get into it. All I have to do now is, once I verify the loudness, is glue the the little feet back on so that way it's not on a hard surface there we go so thanks again for watching have a good one